Welcome to our Five on Five. We're pleased to be joined by Dr. Nicholas Mills, a surgeon with the Medford Women's Clinic. Dr. Mills, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so we're here to talk about robotic surgery. How long has this been in the area? Robotic surgery has been in the area, I think, since 2006, but it's the newest system has just arrived at Rogue Regional Medical Center, um, and it's the mo latest version of the Da Vinci uh, robotic console. Okay, I gotta gotta ask immediately, Da Vinci. You know, why why is it called Da Vinci? Is that a company's name, or is there a Leonardo Da Vinci connection here? Exactly. <laughs> the the company's name is Intuitive Surgical, and uh, they've named it after Da Vinci because he was the essentially the founder, the father mm. of robotics, uh, mm. making early robotic designs and actually designing the first robot. And it really sounds like something out of a out of a science fiction movie almost. But there are real advantages to this kind of surgery. Tell us what those are. Uh, the advantages are, are primarily in the patient. Uh, it's great to have the latest and greatest technology here in the valley, but all the robots give the patients the advantage of uh, less post-operative pain, quicker recoveries, shorter hospital stays. Hmm. Wow, you can't go wrong with that. Now, what, what has impressed you the most with, with this device? What do you love most about it, perhaps? For me, in my practice in gynecology, it's eliminated my open surgery. So hysterectomies or, or myomectomies, removal of fibroids that used to been, be done through abdominal incisions are now done through tiny incisions on the abdomen, allowing the patients to leave the same day after surgery or one day after surgery rather than having a two to four day hospital stay. This is fantastic technology. Like we're, you know, uh, looking forward to the future. Where, where can we go from here? You know, can, can more advancements be made there? Definitely. They, they're just, uh, starting single site surgery for robotics um, and that's been approved in general surgery uh, for cholecystectomy or gallbladder removal and the next phase will be seeing if that can be employed in gynecology uh, head and neck surgery or urology using one single incision on the belly um, uh, about a centimeter which is a fraction of the size that an open surgery uses. Yeah, absolutely, I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> now, when, when they developed this technology, uh, was, it, was it designed to be used at, at places like all over the, the country, or was it more for, for the biggest medical centers? Oh, well, initially, all telesurgery was uh, thought of to be a wartime advantage, being able to do surgery on, uh, on uh, soldiers that were injured out in the field, but then noticing that that may not be the safest place always to do surgery, sure. um, that's been redefined. Um, and the idea initially employed the idea of major centers where you would have uh, surgical experts being able to do telesurgery um, all around, throughout the country. It's fascinating. It's amazing. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. Much more with Dr. Mills in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with Dr. Nicholas Mills, a surgeon with the Medford Women's Clinic. Dr. Mills, we're talking about uh, this robotic surgery. Tell us a little bit more about the technology involved. The technology is different from traditional minimally invasive surgery like laparoscopy in that the instruments have wristed technology and enhanced degrees of freedom, allowing the instruments to move much like a surgeon's hand would move. Hmm, okay, all right. And so uh, surgeons are known for having skill with their hands. Does this perhaps enhance it or does it diminish? I mean, tell, how does that work? It's not, it's not a, a fix for bad surgical skills, okay. but the instruments respond directly to a, a surgeon's hands. So it's much like if you have good surgical skill that will be reflected in the, in the robotic instruments. I see. Okay. All right. And uh, you, you mentioned it, this really helps with patient recovery. Uh, can you give us uh, an example of, of what happens with a patient having whatever kind of surgery with robotic versus non-robotic. In the hysterectomy world, an abdominal hysterectomy has a typical two to four day hospital stay. Okay. Uh, and then often you're looking at four to six weeks recovery away from work and routine activities. Mm -hmm. Because of the abdominal incision, the patients need time to recover. Uh, with a minimally invasive surgery and robotic surgery especially, I have patients that are calling up asking to go back to work within a week. Uh, they're traveling uh, and had a patient who just recently went uh, on a hike, a 3,000 foot vertical Huh. hike uh, in British Columbia two weeks after surgery. Okay. All right. That, that's incredible. Okay. So, so I got to ask, it just came up uh, in my brain. Uh, is it more expensive to have a robotic surgery? How much more expensive would it be? The cost specifically in the operating room case by case is more expensive, sure. but there's so many factors to cost for surgery, hospital stay, days missed of work, post-operative pain. Mm -hmm. So th that all, when it, when you factor in all of those, uh, variables, it seems that robotic surgery is very comparable to traditional surgery. There's certainly value there, it sounds yes. like. Okay, all right, and uh, if anybody has any questions, want to find out more information, is there somewhere they can go? You can go to our website, medfordwomensclinic.com. You can mm -hmm. click on my page there, call our office. Uh, all of our staff is, uh, understands robotic surgery and be able to help. It's fascinating. Dr. Mills, great to meet you. Thanks for Thank coming. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back.